These are some memorable days when I went on to become Indian number one at the age of 13 and played in Wimbledon at the age of 17. And then I won some more than what my dad desired, which was championships in Quebec, Canada, Liverpool, England, Scotland, Holland, Belgium. I played with Yvonne Bulagong Kole, who was at that time women's Wimbledon tennis champion. My mother used to say, I have to excel at studies. Who knows when you may need it? And guess what? I used to scream at my father that you have made me run five miles and my legs are hurting. And when I used to come back home, my mother used to scream at me that why did I not study today? <laughs> and I said, Mommy, Daddy, can you please decide which of you want me to do what? <laughs> anyway, I used to dream of opening a tennis academy in Florida and teach youngsters for the rest of my life. But my life totally switched to legal profession. It was so different. Two different worlds. Oh my God. From running all day in physical fitness, I used to sit all day on a chair and read fat files and I started to grow fat. <laughs> I'm fat until today. At the Supreme Court of India, I learned from the top brains and soon I became legal advisor to banks. I loved my work the most with the National Commission for Women. I was the legal advisor appointed for National Commission for Women because they thought I could empathize and understand women issues. This was a cause closest to my heart. I started fighting for abused women and children. I felt very strongly about the injustice that was meted out to women in India. But again, we women have shown and shown our medal still. So that goes to our credit. I fought several cases of dowry deaths. In India, they give you dowry. And dowry is given for a lifetime. Why? Because they think that the woman is going to remain married for a lifetime. To the contrary, those, they have been, and then I found out, each of those girls was given a new house worth 50 lakhs each. And they came and told me, Madam, for us our life is this 50 lakhs house. Doesn't matter what rape happened to us, please let us go of our case. And I felt like crying. And I said, this is poverty on the other hand, the misuse of poverty. This is what it is. And that's why I felt very strongly about women. And I continued to fight, nevertheless, whether they did do their state. But I still fight. Or my mother, or my sister, because I gave it up. In 1999, I moved to the United States, as it was easier to bring him up away from the noise and interference. I saw my son was growing up. My <coughs> sister was a police commissioner. He was playing with guns at that age. <laughs> I was so, I said no. And then he would ask for a glass of water. Some order he is going and bringing a glass of water. Somebody is going and doing something for him. I said all his life he will remain a VIP, very important person. And how will I be able to make him a common human being? That's the reason I took him away from the noise and interference. I moved away from my comfort zone. It was so hard to move away from family. Family support, unconditional love. I had to make a hard choice. I was very lucky that I received a green card under extraordinary ability, of which only the top 1% in US are eligible. That was because of my past championships, which I won. It was a rare honor for me. This was the third turning point in my life. I was well settled in India, was in an excellent law practice, and I made yet another career move. This is the reality I got. 40.8% of South Asian women reported having been physically or sexually abused by a male partner. 36.9% reported some form of abuse. That is, two out of five South Asian women reported domestic violence. And by the way, 90% out of that is more than the United States, the US population. 90% are South immigrant women. So uh, from all over the world, the immigrants that go to America, 90% of them suffer from domestic violence. And this, by the way, this, this uh, analysis is only made by women who report. Hundreds and scores go unreported. Because the women have this thing, I'll not report about the plan. And that has several other reasons. So numerous girls started calling me from all over the U.S. and started relating their story. 
Women were not speaking out of fear of being deported and many had to lose their kids forever and were forcibly sent back. I was taken aback when a woman asked me that she was forced by her own father to divorce her husband. So these are my two passions in New York. What about Muslim discrimination? Helping immigrants to come to the clusters to become a future.